rankings. Wouldn't want to do that. No, I got many. Welcome to episode four of Pixel Feet Radio with my friend Brayden Suha. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, man? Yo, what's going on, Christian? Thanks for having me on here, man. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited. I haven't talked to you in a while. So um, so in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit, you know, we were talking about this the other day, a little bit of how, uh, how everybody needs to get out of their little bubble because, well, I noticed this, that a lot of people who do what we do, you know, I would say a good 80% of us work from home. And, you know, like most of my friends are very successful, but they have, they're career oriented people like doctors, lawyers, you know, that type of deal, financial advisors, you know, so they don't, they don't get what we go through. Right. And they're in their For offices and sure. their cubicles. So they have people around it. And I don't think enough people talk about this, man. It can get pretty lonely working from home. You know, I work with a big team and, you know, even though I'm talking to people all day long, it gets to me because I'm a very, I'm an extrovert. Right. So, but uh, before we get into that, uh, you know, and, and talk about it. One of them, I, I like to get, for everybody to get their their story. That way, they people get to know you. So, the name of your agency is uh, Amplify Solar Marketing. Um, and we made uh, we met a couple of years ago. But why don't you tell everybody your story, Brandon, just to you know, so they know where you come from, what you've done. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the intro, man. Um, so, so I have a background in computer science, and I went to college for four years, got my degree joined the corporate world, worked for like a Fortune 400 company. Uh, within my first like two months of employment, uh, my division of the company that I just started at, fresh out of college, right? We, uh, we got cut and we were sold to like this other company who like did like an $8 billion like acquisition of like half this other company that I worked for. Right. And so like within my first couple months, you know, I was like sold and that kind of just like, kind of like broke my spirit a little bit for like, corporate America. I was like, wow, really? I'm like, thought I had a good gig going. Then I like get sold. So like uh, cattle. That, you just get I sold. Like cattle. It, it was seriously, <laughs> you're, just, you're just a number in the system. <laughs> I was just a number. And I thought I was all important and grandiose ideas and sense of self. Yeah, yeah. And you know, they sold me. And so that kind of like was like kind of strike one. And so from there, I decided to, I told my manager because you know, I worked in IT, so you're allowed to work like one or two days from home usually, like remotely. Right. And so I told my manager, yo, I'm moving to Las Vegas, but, uh, you know, I'll still work here if you want. It was kind of like my way of kind of doing like the four hour work week thing, you know, where he says like, make your job remote. Right. right? And so I did that. I worked for this company for, you know, three, four months after I moved to Vegas remotely. Hold on. And it was all Hold on before you get going, before yeah. you keep going. For those of you that don't know, the Four Hour Work Week. It's a book by Tim Cook. Is it Tim Cook? Ferris. Ferris. Tim, Tim Ferris. Sorry, Tim Ferris, Mr. OCD. Which I, I have all his books, by the way, and they're on my bookshelf when you watch the videos. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's one of the OG books that gets everybody in this game, or you know, back in the day or whatever. But I'll put the link down so you guys can find it. It's pretty good. So sorry. Yeah, go ahead. It, it's a good book. I'll get the questions later. So might as well just answer them ahead of time, but go ahead. For sure. For sure. And you know, what's funny. Like I did this before I even read that book. I read that book after I moved to Vegas. So Me too. Me kind too. of funny. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I moved to Vegas. My first day back at work in Vegas, uh, I get like an email from the, the CIO. Yeah. The CIO or the CT CTO. And he was like, yeah, we need you. We need a resignation letter from you because we can't have all of our employees like moving around the country and still expecting to like keep their jobs you know i'm like well great that worked out well uh luckily they let me work there for like hold on hold on, hold on hold on back up so they gave you permission to go remote and then they the the guy gets on the phone with you and basically fires you it's like you need to quit because we're not going to do this uh well the cto sent my manager an email and then wow. he told me over the phone yeah yeah Wow. Yeah. So they didn't even Which, give me I mean, like I kind of I kind of expected it. They gave me four four months notice basically. So it was okay. Okay, I guess that's not horrible, but yeah. you know, you you don't have a family, you're young, so who cares? So go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm like, well, shit, now what do I do? And so I'm new in Vegas. I don't really know that many people. I'm like going out, meeting people, making friends, things like that. And that's when I happened to within my first like 
three, four weeks there, I met like my first mentor who I would consider like a true mentor of mine uh, when it comes to like business and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I meet this guy out at a nightclub. He kind of takes me under his wing. He, you know, he says like he does like a YouTube channel and he's got a very large channel and stuff. And he's kind of like the marketer behind the videos. He's not actually in the videos. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like I, I start to get glimpses into like this guy's life and what he does. And, you know, he has a personal chef who cooks him meals based on his Did macro. He and Did he have a Lambo? That's he didn't the question. Have a Lambo. Oh, he didn't have a Lambo. No. No. No, all I right, know. All right, all right. I know. Is he really a mentor if he doesn't have yeah. a Lambo? I don't he know. He can't be a guru without a Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He, he wasn't selling a Facebook ads course. So oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so, so yeah, I meet this guy. He uh, he kind of introduced me that like it's possible to make money without a job. Like before this, I was completely clueless to that idea in right. general. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, time goes on. He, I like see what he does. I'm kind of like jobless for a few months, but luckily I saved up a bunch of money because I was kind of planning on this happening. And uh, yeah, I, I, that was like my first glimpse into online business. So from there on, I, uh, I took a course. I actually, my first course I ever bought was uh, the Ty Lopez SMMA <sighs> course. $997. I was so nervous spending a thousand bucks. Social media marketing agency. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Basically, right. like managing Instagrams and Facebook. By the way, I'm not hating. I'm, talk about Tyler, I, I'm not hating on Ty Lopez at all because he did blow up because of that 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 ad. I mean, you, I mean, that was genius. So here my car. And giving away cars. I don't hear my here my cars. garage or whatever it was. <laughs> right. I know the video. I don't know the exact words, but the you know I know the video. That that tells you something. Yeah. So it's just you know when you put up a million courses about everything. Anyway. You lose Nothing the against effect, Tyler Lopez. The guy's very know. successful. Nothing against him. Go ahead. Yeah, super successful. His course wasn't very good, though. I I, I have to say that. No, really? I, I would never guess. Wasn't so. the but go ahead. <laughs> so I buy this course, nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Super nervous. Uh, I go through the course. I think it's supposed to be like a two-month course. I go through it in like three weeks. You know, it's like a hundred something videos. It's insanely long. Oh, really? Yeah. And yeah. For the videos. It's all no, him. no. Oh, I was gonna no. Say. He brought in like tons of other people to like teach each different little module, and every other video is a different person. So kind of basically just licensing his name out, and everybody else. Exactly. Does. Everybody uh -huh. does the work for him, not and they sure they get a cut. That's not a good hating. idea. That's not a good idea because that. not hating. He doesn't know how to build an agency, but if he brings in people who do, then it yeah. makes sense. And it right? has his name, so yeah, he gets his cut. All right, cool. Yeah, and so I go through this course. I'm super new to sales, super new to entrepreneurship, super new to everything. Like. I'm just crippled by fear essentially for. So at this point you're thinking, oh, I'm my own boss. I have freedom. I can do whatever I want. So you stop working from nine to five and now you go to 16, 18 hours a day. Cause that's yeah, the part that people so, miss. <laughs> yeah. That's the part people forget about is that yeah. uh, when you don't have a boss anymore, you got to be your own boss. So you have to have your own self-discipline. You can't rely on right. someone getting mad at you for missing work. Right. Right. And it's really easy to let yourself slip with that if you don't hold yourself to a high standard. Right. So struggle with that for a long time, but you know, I don't want to give too much information here in my background. I know we got other things to talk about, Yeah. but essentially go through this course. People love it though, dude. People love it. When they listen to it, they love it. So just, I mean, just go for it, whatever. They don't like okay. it. They can tune out. I don't care. Go. It's my, skip forward. It's my world. I do whatever I want. Go. I'm enjoying Sounds it. Sounds good. I like that. All right. But yeah, so basically I ate shit. Just like Gary Vee talks about, you know, I oh, ate shit. No. No, 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 just stop. No, no. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but um, basically, like I worked really hard. Well, tried to work hard, but I didn't get a lot done in my first. But like, did six you live in an apartment with ten people, a one bedroom apartment with ten people, <laughs> and didn't eat? No, I just I had a two bedroom apartment with two okay. people. But right. so Gary V, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that Gary bad. Gary would be like, "No, that's that's not rough enough, bro." He said, but, "I didn't do it. He didn't, I didn't <laughs> yeah. do it right." <laughs> yeah, you didn't eat the dirt. <laughs> yeah, go. I go. But uh, <laughs> yeah, essentially, um, for probably about six months, it took me to and to like get my first client in social media marketing. Right. right. I uh, I tried so many different strategies. I tried. I literally printed out. This is what we met, page. right? Like, no, no, no. This no, this before. before. Okay, a year ahead. before we met. Okay, yeah, I printed out pages like a twenty-page binder, right? And I found this tool online that like you type in the business name and it like prints out like a social media report. Right. And then I would type in and like 
give them a bunch of advice on what they could improve. You know, if they had like, like their Facebook profile wasn't optimized rightly, correctly, I would, uh, I would, I would note that out. I printed those, I laminated the pages, I put them in a, like a binder, right? Mm -hmm. And I drove around Las Vegas and delivered these to dentists and veterinarians. Nice. I, I, I did this. Oh, cool. that's that's pretty uh, pretty hustly right there. I like that. Okay, so what happened? It was. I delivered. I want to say maybe like thirty to forty of these things. Okay. So I probably had 40. like five bucks in each of them because after you laminate and print and all that and buy the binders and stuff. Uh, yeah. And so I delivered like forty of these, and I like put my business card in there, like my email address, and I was like. When I got home, I was like, all right, I'm going to just kick back and let everybody start ringing my phone. Oh, and yeah, totally. Send emails exactly wanting, wanting to give me money, you know? Yeah. That's what I thought would happen. Because yeah. <laughs> I was You're like, huh? I'm, I'm leading with value. <laughs> I thought you just had to lead with value. I thought you yes. just had to, like, do really nice for people and they'll, they'll just, like, pay you, you know? Right. A uh, little naive, to say the least. And so, so many people needless to say, literally zero people called zero. me. Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> and I did follow-up runs. I, I went back did to you? these places okay. and tried to talk to them in person. And I always got like, oh, yeah, she's busy. You know, mm -hmm. I, I basically never really got through to the gatekeeper except for one time. And, mm -hmm. you know, my first, like, sales presentation, let's just say it didn't go that well. I was super nervous. And, yeah. you know, what it's like to try to sell someone your services for the first time when you don't even know if you can help them. You know, right, right. that's the hard part because you don't have that self belief, so no one else is gonna believe you. Yeah, that's like the really difficult part. And so I did all this dentist, and then I went into like cold email. I started emailing people. I never got any responses. I didn't know how to do it. But basically, I had no luck for like six months, and then eventually I started prospecting on Upwork, but not like doing business through Upwork. I would just like find people looking for help. And I would just send them a Upwork was around at this time. Wow. Okay. I thought it was yeah, newer than Upwork's that. been around for a while. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And so like I would look for profiles who put like an email address in like the description and then I would just shoot them private emails based on what they were looking for help with. Right. And uh, I got like three clients in a week. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah. So. They were each paying me, I think $750 a piece. <laughs> That's Big a money. Big yeah. money. It's a start. It's okay. Hey, hey, uh, listen, for people that are watching and listening to this, my first client, and this is after I already had proven, you know, made money with Facebook ads and all that, with Shopify and all that. I was charging $500 a month. I'm actually friends with her still to this day. She owns a med spa in uh, Ocala, Florida. Are you and, still running uh, her ads? Yes. Yes, I still Whoa. do. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. From, uh, <laughs> close to four years ago or something like that. I don't even know how long it's been. Yeah. It's crazy. It, man. Yeah. All right. So you. you got your first clients and let's move forward a little bit. So, okay. You got, yep. where did it go from there? So this is where you started. Okay. Getting the hang of it. Yeah. I got my first clients. Uh, kind of started to get the hang of things. Uh, from there I got, uh, let's see. One of them charged back because I built them a whole bunch of Google ads and drove traffic to their website, but their website didn't convert. So they blamed me, yeah, of, of course. course, of course. So and you didn't, at, the time, one. at the time you didn't have enough experience where you went on the actual site itself and say, Hey, we need to change this, 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 and that, because it's not going to convert. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, you, know, you, didn't know any sometimes you don't know until you run traffic right. and no, I course. just took his word for it when he's like, Oh yeah, it converts like a champ. Well, it's like, his oh, yeah, my right, website you know? has a 25% conversion rate. Exactly. Yeah. And so that one didn't go so well. The mm -hmm. other ones went okay. I kept them for maybe a couple months. Uh, nothing crazy, but it kind of gave me some confidence, gave me some footing. Um, but from there, so let, I Mark, actually... Go ahead. So let me guess what happened. So you started running the ads for these people and the leads started coming in. And of course, they, they weren't closing them, right? And this is why you lost those clients? Yeah. One of them, we were running webinar registrations and I was getting like I think at the time, like three dollar, three Canadian dollar webinar registrations. So I, I was actually doing pretty good. I was pretty new at this. It's decent. And I was getting still really expensive, but decent <laughs> for okay. the time being. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But basically, all these people would show up to his webinar, and he wouldn't close them on the webinar. Uh, and so, so he, didn't, he didn't do the, like that. He didn't have like the actual webinar down to a T, like the story and everything. Like, 
how he was homeless and then all of a sudden he was like balling and this is how he did it secret one two and three and value stack and then close them he just like went yeah, in he didn't, do like that. he didn't do that at all hmm, and okay. so yeah i eventually lost him because like he wasn't closing sales from the ad spend yeah so blame that on you uh, sure. exactly mm -hmm. and the other one it was just kind of like a small e-commerce store and i was just kind of managing like facebook posts and stuff we weren't really running any ads so that didn't really drive any real business so they didn't see a reason to like keep paying me so yeah understandable so what happened after that so after that i actually went and i used like the the whole dan henry method do you remember this like asking mm -hmm. clients if you could run ads for them for free but they cover the ad spend oh yeah i remember that okay yeah I know so I, I did that yeah, yeah yeah that's that's where i heard about it on his webinar oh, yeah. but back in the day um but yeah so i got a free essentially a free client right mm -hmm. and he was like a solar sales guy this yeah. is how i kind of got my background in solar which is what i still do um he was a solar sales guy and i ran him some ads in las vegas area and we got him like 30 40 leads on like 300 in spend which is pretty pretty legit that's, at the time pretty legit yeah yeah and he like ended up getting a sale from one of the leads which and equals to in solar 25 grand or more so what this that? one was like a huge system because it was out in like some country house that was like huge and vegas utilities are really high i think it was like 50 60 thousand wow. okay That's yeah awesome. obviously his commission was only maybe like three four k or something but, yeah, but still. still a pretty good return yeah right, right, right. and so i run these ads but the guy kind of like he like ends up like ditching like he had a lot of personal stuff going on mm -hmm. and so he never took me on as like a as a real i never got him as like a real client yeah. he kind of just like took the leads ran closed the sale himself and uh, i actually had to cover like a, almost 200 dollars of his ad spend for him so oh. this guy was a real i hope that people are, if you're listening learn from this story <laughs> because yeah. we all been there at one point or another you know at the beginning so you know just take notes if you're listening go ahead yeah and so that kind of like killed my confidence you know yeah. instead of coming away from the situation like dang i can do this i right. kind of came away with like dang i did good and you know i still didn't make money sure you know so yeah yeah and so i kind of like dropped this whole solar industry for a while after this because i was like I don't know. I just kind of like suppressed the memory, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And so I kind of forgot about it. And up until the conference that I met you at. Yeah. And so, you know, between my first solar client and when you and I met was uh, basically I had like a couple local business clients. I was running ads for like a cryotherapy, um, another online store and like a dentist. Yeah. Right now, I think I was charging about a thousand dollars per month mm -hmm. at this time. I was taking a bunch of other courses, really active in online Facebook groups, yeah. uh, just trying to like figure this stuff out. And actually, at this point in time, I moved back in with my parents. I think I was, I think I was twenty four or five. I think I was twenty five. Yeah, I was twenty five. Moved back in my parents' basement, and I'm like trying to build like this online business. From my parents' basement at twenty five, right? Hold on. Brayden taught me how to use Zapier. That's how long ago this was. <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting down and you were bitching about my laptop. I'm like, I just bought this thing. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, why are you in, where? Why are you using a Windows computer? <laughs> because uh, hey, I like Windows computers. Go ahead. All right, let's move it up a little bit because we're dragging this out. But yes, okay, okay. So we met at the conference and yeah. Um, uh, what do you call it with, uh, and then that's when, when you moved in back with your parents, I remember. And this yep. is when you have, we became friends, right. And we would talk almost every day and I was like, come on, Brandon, you gotta do this. Shit. <laughs> I want to curse on YouTube, but you gotta do this. And then like, I just kept pumping you up and, and now you're living the dream, the laptop dream, traveling around the world. Digital nomad. <laughs> yeah, digital nomad. So you've lived in Vegas, went back to Nebraska. You went to Mexico, Colombia, Argentina. You're in Argentina right now. Uh, 
you're gonna jet set somewhere next, but at the same time, you're killing it in solar now because you stuck to it. You picked a niche and you stuck to it, which many people don't. So yeah, now you're charging a, a pretty penny for your clients because you have proven case studies, plenty of clients and all that good stuff. So he's living the dream, but he's a digital nomad. So the reason, you know, I know this was a little bit dragged out, like the new background, but people love him in the background. You know, hopefully people can, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Resonate. Yeah, resonate that not everybody you know it takes time you know when you see these super successful people it didn't happen overnight you know when i started i used to see these people in the online game and i thought they just made it overnight too and then once i got to know a lot of them a lot of the top people i realized like you know they've been doing this for 10 years you know before they like they made it huge right and and you'll see like a curve like with me it was just like small 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 and just gaining knowledge gaining knowledge failing you know shiny object syndrome you know throwing a million things yeah. out there and all of a sudden there was this exponential curve where i just like went up just because all the knowledge just like clicked at least that's what happened with me it just one day just everything just clicked because i was taking all these courses and reading all these books and i will absorb the information but it was like scattered in my head and then one day just like clicked it, it, it really just clicked and it's like, I saw the fucking matrix, like, boom, you know, I was like, okay, this is how it gets done type of deal. But it brings me back to, you know, think about it. You still like traveling all over the place, which is cool. People think you're, you're partying it up every day, but you're pretty much working all day. Uh, yeah. It's nice that you have a different country. You can go anywhere and all that stuff, but it gets pretty lonely, huh? And then we don't have the network that you would have in an office and going to network conferences and stuff like that. So I think, uh, that's what I wanted to bring up because I see people talking about it all the time in groups and stuff like that. Like, what do you do, like, you know, to stay motivated during the day or whatever? I don't. I like money. That's what motivates me. I don't need anything else. I don't need any motivational bullshit. I just like to look at my bank account, and that's what motivates me. So, I mean, that's the truth. But I cannot stress enough how important it is to at least go to, like, one conference a year. And if you can go to more, do it. It's not so much, listen, I don't go to Funnel Hacking Live because of the motivational stuff or, you know, the little, well, yeah, I mean, I guess they'll, you'll learn something new here and there, but it's more of the connections. Like the connections that I made, like Braden, I met at one of my conferences um, with Lover, one of my mentors, and, uh, you know, met tons of people that I still to every day. And these, these, you know, when you have access to these people in your network, one, they do what you do, to, you know, to a degree. And then you always have that helpline. I, I can reach out to any of these people anytime during the day, on the phone, on a message and everything. And I get my questions answered, you know? I've met people that are more successful than I am. And they'll, you know, yeah, their schedule is packed from the time. One thing that I have learned from going to all these conferences, and it's like, people share everything, man. They don't hold back, right? Like, people want you to be as happy as they are. If that makes sense. Like I want people who are not as successful as I am to be just as happy as I am doing what I do. Dude, dude I wake up every day and I'm like, I do whatever I want, <laughs> you know, and I do what I love. Like there's nothing better than that. Right. So, you know, how many people have you met? You've been all over the conferences and stuff like that. So talk a little bit about that. Like, you know, the support network and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me back up a tiny bit about like how important conferences are. Mm -hmm. I think it is when when we're sitting in the basement and we're working by ourselves, right? We feel like we are these independent uh, like silos, right? Trying to like trying to make it for ourselves, and we it's almost like you don't have this belief in yourself that you need. But when you go to a conference, when you meet people actually doing this and become friends with people who you thought were above you right like i went to this conference from nebraska i fly all the way down to austin where, where i met christian here uh at a john loger conference and i knew nobody i knew nick robbins online and that was pretty much it i was the only person i knew who was going to this conference who i like at least heard of yeah i already have uh, my little crew there i had a uh, bold nick selma like a bunch of yeah people, you so, knew yeah. some people yeah and i i thank you again for introducing me to more people because you knew more people there than i did and i kind of like came up to you cold yeah. um but i was going into this and i was just in my parents basement it was really tough uh but after i 
met at all these people, you, Nick, Sema, all these people at uh, the Logger Conference, everything became real. I realized that uh, just because someone has an agency who did, you know, maybe $4 million in revenue uh, the prior year, they're just a chill dude. You know, you can, just like you said, you can just like ask them anything. You can, you know, have a drink with them. You can shoot them a message and they'll reply to you. Like you stop kind of putting all these successful people, you know, quote unquote, successful people on a pedestal. And you start realizing that, you know, they're just like you, they just maybe had more experience. Maybe they just believe in themselves a little bit more. And so yeah. that's the biggest thing I, I've gotten from conferences is uh, that, that self-belief and it's like made all the difference in the world. Yeah. I think the problem is that people get in their bubbles too. Like, uh, and I'm, listen, I'm guilty about this too. Like I try to keep Facebook like close, like regular Facebook close because I get distracted so easily, man, my ADD, but you know, I'm part of all these private groups that people don't have access to, you know what I mean? So if I have a question, I can ask it like that. And it's just groups that are made through masterminds or, you know, that's how I joined the master, one of the masterminds I'm in right now, just through people I met. And it's like invite only, you know, it's not even public. You've never seen it in a webinar. It's like, you know, we know that you're at our level, come join. And then there's people at your level. And then, I mean, you know, there's no nonsense when we talk about like, let's say Facebook ads, like we're talking about like boom, 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 boom terminology. We just move through it quick. There's no, you know, newbie, hey guys, how do I do a, a PPE ad or engagement ad, what we call it now, you know? Yeah. So it makes a difference. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, they're calling it the, I think they're gonna start calling it the gig economy too. So a lot of people are going to be just like freelancers, you know? A lot of jobs are going away with automation. And if you're going into this online game, I mean, let's face it, most of you that are getting into this online game, you're not gonna go work. Your goal is not to work for somebody else. And if it is your goal to work for somebody else, which that's okay too, right? I've done sure. it just to see how they do things and to learn from it too, you know? Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but you gotta make sure you you, you keep, uh, keep a network together. So, I mean, that's my two cents in that. I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And, you know, everybody loves to hear everybody's stories people that I know and what, what we do and everything like that. So what's your plan moving forward, man? What are you, what are you thinking about? I know, you know, you're in Argentina right now. The business is doing good. What do you think? Uh, I always ask people, what do you, what do you think it's coming in 2020? What, how do you think everything's changing in the online game and, you know, the way we do things and, you know, everything about it pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So for 2020, I see, I don't know. I see the death, a little bit of the retainer marketing strategy. So getting clients on a retainer, at least for myself and I think a lot of industries, I think clients are getting sick of uh, paying, you know, these quote unquote marketers to run services for them when they don't know what kind of results they're gonna get. Now local businesses, this is like kind of the only way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because they're not gonna, so, so there's like pay per retainer right? There's mm -hmm. that kind of client. And then there's what I do is called paper lead. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we generate a lead for X and we find clients and sell those leads for two X or 1.5 X or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever, whatever that margin can be. Yeah. Um, and it's a good model, but, but it takes money. I, it, it takes money to build it up. Obviously you got to pay for yeah. the ad spend and get yeah, the you leads. Have to cover some ad spend. It's a lot more risk, a lot more risk, but also more reward. Okay. So if somebody's watching this and they want to do it the way you do it, what do you recommend like for them to, do, you know, to do it the correct way? Like, uh, you know, obviously they they got to put the money up front. So I would say, make sure to have a client on board before you do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple ways that you can do it. And, I would actually recommend starting with the retainer client so you can kind of learn on other people's money. OPM is what I like to call it. So you can learn on other people's money, try to do really well for the client, but really focus on Hold the Hold on, let's rewind that because I'm not, I'm not an advocate of learning on people's money. All right, before you get a client, okay, please know what you're doing when it comes to the ads you're running and make sure you know landing pages and do, I don't know, do ads for a friend for free or just, make sure you get something on your end because i'm going to tell you right now the last thing you want to do is go in there and not bring results and then you're going to look like an ass and it turns into a nightmare so that's my it does, opinion. but how else are you supposed to learn you know 
I mean, I mean once you, once you, you get, get to run some ads, ads. you I have mean, to run study some ads. and figure it out. Study and figure it out. But I learned on my own money, on my own dime. You know, I mean, if you know you can pull it off and you think you know what it takes to get it done, you should do it for you know for free for a couple people. What it, just run some ads. You know, I don't care if it's like a hundred dollars. I just want you to have a knowledge of how it works. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you, I don't want you to be a bad. complete newbie and go sell someone because that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying once you study it and you understand and you have a thorough understanding, mm. maybe you haven't spent that much in ads, okay. but you know that. Uh, and be you clear can about it. the result. Yeah, uh, yeah. What I would do is like, listen, uh, I tested some stuff. Uh, you know, what I can do is like, I can do it for this much, you know, but set expectations. As long as you set the expectations, it's fine. I've seen people do it. I did it way back in the day. I would tell them, like, listen, I have an idea for this. I want to test it. Uh, I'll give you, you know, my discount rate. Are you in or out? You know? And you'd be amazed how many people say yes. So don't be afraid to ask. I mean, that's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, and that's exactly what I did to get my first solar client. I was like, you put up the ad spend, I'll run the ads for free, right? You could do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but, yeah, so you could do that. That's one way to mm -hmm. learn and get a good grounding in – your ability to generate these leads. Um, so you have retainer clients. You could also make a back end deal. So that is like, okay, Ooh, Mr. Client. Okay, Mr. Client, you pay for the ads. You pay me nothing in management unless some of the leads that I produce for you closes. Ooh, right. So then you can start taking a cut, like a revenue share type of deal, just on the leads uh, that you generate. So that's, that's one way. I like that. That's right? That's ballsy, that, but that's risky though, because you're relying on them to close the lead. So you got to make right. sure you're working with somebody who knows what they're doing and they have a sales system in place. It's not just like, oh, all right, we'll follow it one day. No, like they got to be closers, right? And you know, right. and let me, let me make this clear. This isn't your local family dentist no. that you want to do this with, right? No. When I say paper lead clients, the kind of clients that I'm talking about are you know, probably at least doing 10 million a year in revenue, right? Right. This isn't your local gym. This isn't a dentist. It's not mm -hmm. uh, anything like that. These are like nationally renowned, like kind of clients, you know, they at least operate within two States or something. Right. Right. Um, but, and you also have to make sure that they have like a call center and like a sales force to work leads. Mm -hmm. So that's going to really narrow down what kind of niches you can go after. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I know insurance is huge. There's like uh, home loans and businesses like that uh, that have like real estate agents who are like really good at following up. It's yeah. kind of like their sales machine. So you want to make sure that they have a sales machine. You want to make sure that they're actually going to work the leads that you generate for them if you do any sort of back end deal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so th that's a couple ways. And then also you can do like, a paper lead deal where they pay you up front for the leads. So you guarantee, let's just say a hundred leads. You say, okay, they're a hundred dollars a lead. They pay you $10,000. You deliver a hundred leads. Mm -hmm. And if they order more, they order more. If not, they don't, you know, but it's a lot easier to close these sales as well because they're guaranteed a result. And you're running everything on your own ad account. So all the data is on your end. And then once you get it going and then you never stop, it gets better and better and better. And so you know exactly. what your results are going to be, you know what your cost per lead is and you know how much you can sell it for. Now the question is, how do you figure out how much to sell those leads for? Like how, how did you do it at least, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I had retainer clients before I ever did a paper lead deal. So I kind of knew what I could generate them for. Right. And I also knew the industry really well. So I kind of knew what they were worth to the client. Um, but that being said, like I kind of went into my first sales call, like I just wrote down some prices. I was like, mm -hmm. all right, this area, I divided the United States into seven different areas. I said, all right, this area, 150 lead, this area, you know, 95 lead, this area, 115. What I would and, recommend, what I would recommend for people is if you don't know how much you're selling for is shop around, you know, try to find some other people that are doing the same thing as you are, get some pricing, you know, Get some pricing from them or you know never never think about it as your your ne never undersell yourself you know if you're selling to i don't know a car dealership i'm just throwing an example out there you're bringing them a lead right they're selling a seventy five thousand dollar mercedes right you know don't sell the lead for five bucks <laughs> you know what i mean like 
make it viable. Like if you know that lead's going to come in and make an appointment and most likely buy that car, you know, if they're making three grand on that, on that car, you want to get your P your cut, right? It's not, Oh, here's a lead for a dollar. <laughs> you know, don't do that. Cause yeah, you know, sure. you know, it, and it, Listen, if people give you crap about it, you'd be like, hey, Mr. Klein, it sounds to me like you're the only one who wants to make money here. <laughs> you know? That's not what I'm here for. I'm not charity. So that's just a little piece of advice there. You know, that most people don't, don't take into consideration when they're starting out. Yeah, for sure. Do, do your homework, do your research, kind of get a grounding or like a footing in that niche to understand the value of your lead and, you know, also run some ads. You got to figure out how much you can generate them for. Yeah. Because let's say you know 100 at $100 a piece at $10,000, but it costs you $150 a piece to generate them, well, you lose, right? You're out that money. Yeah. You know, you might it's have a, to refund the client. You might just take that 5K loss. Yeah. Like, I risk it's my a, reward. It's amazing to me how many people don't know their numbers, like CPAs and LTVs and AOVs. Like, it's insanity. Like, how do you know what your cost per acquisition should be? How do you know what your lifetime value of the client is? How do you know what your average order value is? Like it blows my mind that people don't know these numbers. So, yeah. you know, when you're going in there, you got to know your numbers for sure. Right. So you want to make sure your client knows or your, the prospect knows their numbers as well. Right. So, so all right, I know cool. what the lead is worth to them, but so yeah. What, so that's kind of like my outlook for 2020. I see, uh, I see more people going into that space. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I think uh, I think a lot of people are going to do that. You know, whoever's done an e-com and stuff like that, you know, hardcore like I am. Um, and yeah, I still run leads too, but my first passion is always my e-com. That's what that's how I started. Um, I you know, with the whole agency thing, I think uh, there was a wave there where where there's too many people uh, trying to sell their services without knowing what they were doing. And that's why I get kind of apprehensive about that. And dude, people did it in e-com and now it's catching up to them. Like teenagers, like 16 years old, you know, throwing out Shopify stores. And then, you know, they order all this stuff from China and it never gets delivered. And they just scam all these people out of, you know, out of their money because the shipments are delayed or they don't, they don't know anything about customer service because they never had a quote unquote real job in their life. Like, all you have to do is just send an email, you know, keep your customers, in the know of what's going on, but I guess they get, I don't know, kids being the kids, I guess. So yeah. Anyway, that's the biggest thing though. Expectations. What? Yeah. You absolutely. Know, as long as you let the client know what, what's going on, like you almost never have problems. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> little, cool. Little, man. Little hack. All right. I think that's a, that's a good little story for everybody to listen to. I know we're uh, the goal was to study more about like networking and stuff like that, but there's really no, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Just, Get out of your house. <laughs> you know, my mentor is like, get out of your house. <laughs> go to events. Go to networking. You know, I'm guilty of this too. Like, I should go out more to like, you know, coffee shops or like, I don't know, restaurants for lunch. And but the truth in the matter is, I get in. I go into my crazy mode at first thing in the morning, and then I'm in the zone, and I don't want to like get in the car and go somewhere. So I don't do it that often. But I do go to conferences. You know, a few a year. So that makes up for that. Yeah, but you'd be amazed. Also, go ahead. I was just gonna say also for anybody who lives in kind of like a bigger metropolitan area, yeah. a good hack to go and meet other entrepreneurs and other people trying to do what you're doing is to go to you know co-working spaces like WeWork. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. That's where I met a bunch of people in Medellin, Colombia. I made a lot of good friends there. Did a lot of networking, and it's really easy too because uh, everybody there is doing the same thing as you. So. Everybody's most part. mindset and everybody can help everybody is at least doing some sort of online business, you know, yeah. very open to networking and stuff. Think, so uh, if you have a WeWork in your area, just go check it out. It's free for a day. Um, and then I think a co-working uh, membership is usually like 300 bucks a month. Yeah. So you can definitely get an ROI on that. I think, uh, I think 2020 and moving forward, that's, that's going to be, a, you know, we work those type of places. I mean, you know, for Lauderdale, there was like so many of them popping up. I mean, I was a member of, it's called uh, Pipe Something. I can't remember the name of it. And it was like on the 21st floor on a high rise, man. It was awesome. Like I had a beautiful yeah. beach in the city and then people would do what I do. And, you know, it was pretty cool. I think there's going to be, and they were popping they're popping left and right. So I'm sure there's one coming to your area. If it's not WeWork, somebody else will do it. Shit, nobody else has done it. You do it, you know, <laughs> build one, rent it out. You know, it's just an office space, co-working space, make it cool. 
I think that's where this, the gig economy for sure, because with all these jobs being automated and, you know, I think that's what's going to happen in 2020. But all right, man, we're out of time. But thank you so much for doing this with me today. Um, yeah, of course. Where can people find you if they want solar leads? Give them all your, your info. Uh, you know, I don't really kind of amplify solar marketing.com. You can go there and <laughs> yeah. submit a contact form. <laughs> I don't really have a big social media presence or anything like that. I kind of like to, dude, I had to take all my phone go. numbers off. Like when I Why? started because of YouTube and all this crap, people started calling to like thinking they can get a hold of me now and, and ask questions. <laughs> so, <funny. laughs> like, like I'm tech support. Like, you want to ask, ask questions in the comments or join the group with the link below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them in the group or the comments. But no, I'm not giving you my phone number. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Anyway, for those of you listening uh, on the podcast, subscribe. YouTube, subscribe. Leave comments. Make sure you watch the next video when the boxes come up. Click on one of them, and then I guess. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, everybody.